Dr. Simon Says, Pawns, on page 85, attempting to discuss a biogenesis for Coughlin 666 YouTube Pornish Olympics, week number one entry, most educational. For you who don't know on page 85, this is the guy who thinks reality depends on his imagination, and therefore can logically prove the existence of God. I'm going to give you a link in the description box where you can watch him get sodomized by Tool Times Logic Cock on that subject. This time I'm going to discuss about Genesis with this fool. First step in DNA replication is the separation of the two DNA strands. How can this be done without any proteins present, a part of a biogenesis theory? Simply by adding heat to break the hydrogen bonds between the two DNA strands. After five videos explaining how this is done, the most stubborn idiot on YouTube still challenged this simple concept demonstrated in the lab. M. Page fame claimed that DNA cannot be separated by the same amount of heat used to separate oligonucleotides in the lab, and therefore we can't prove a biogenesis at all. Well, let's look at what this idiot had to say the last time we discussed this topic about DNA separation and heat. Nice try, but let's take a look at what you actually said one more time, shall we? The reason for this is because there's such a thing as a kinetic barrier, right? You know, you know how you went over so much about you know the weak bonds between the nucleotides and how it's so weak. All we need to do is increase the heat, and they just separate. Well, in DNA, you, that doesn't happen. In DNA, that just doesn't happen because there's that kinetic barrier. It's stopping it from just doing it by itself. Okay, sorry about that Mickey Mouse voice there, but the MPH85 talked, ranted for five minutes, doing a filibuster on this topic, you know, he wasn't saying actually anything. Well, it all boils down to this. He uses an analogy, I push a ball and it moves, well, with a tree that doesn't happen. The ball represents the nucleotides, DNA represents the tree, and moves represent the separation of DNA strands. Or right, the hydrogen breaking of the hydrogen bonding and separation of the strands. Well, you can't really say that uh, nucleotides are th to DNA what the ball is to a tree. What you should have used a much better analogy would have been to say something like this: I push a blue ball and it moves. Well, with a red ball that doesn't happen because you see there's a genetic barrier, right? So this idiot thinks that. You can't use uh, heat to separate DNA molecules. You would, you would have to use so much more energy that it wouldn't be possible, and therefore a biogenesis is just bullshit. Well, okay, let's go over this one more time. I will try to explain it so that the dumbest, most mentally challenged idiot of biblical proportion can understand it. 
No, not him. You, NAPH85. If I go to fast, pause the video, maybe you can pull up Google on the screen so you can Google any big words you don't understand. I'll try to explain it as simple as I can. I'm afraid it will still go way over your head. But maybe, just maybe, a miracle will happen today and you will understand it on some level. So, let's start with any nucleotide. We are not going to specify what kind of nucleotide, but all nucleotides consist of a base, a sugar and a phosphate group. If you link a bunch of these together, you get an oligonucleotide. If you hydrogen bond pair this with a complementary strand, you will get a double-stranded oligonucleotide. Now, let's compare it to a DNA strand. Do you see that? How similar they are. We have the DNAs here, and we have the double-stranded oligonucleotide. The only thing that holds these strands together are the hydrogen bonding between the complementary strands, nothing else. Do you understand this concept? The same thing in DNA. Only hydrogen bonding keeps the two strands together. Well, you might inject with your stupid genetic barrier what the hell you're talking about. But we're not talking about human DNA where you have uh, not only the double helix that forms chromatins and solenoids and loops and minibands and eventually an entire chromosome. Uh, here we have a lot of proteins and not, we are not just dealing with hydrogen bonds. But remember, we're talking about abiogenesis. Remember, DNA replication without any enzymes or proteins, no proteins at all, just naked, pure naked DNA, and pure naked DNA, that looks like this, only hydrogen bonds that uh, hold the two strands together, do you get this, can you tiny little brain understand this, so in order to uh, separate the DNA, all that is needed is to separate the DNA strands, let me explain it like this, in order to break hydrogen bonds, we need to add 2 to 4 kilojoules per mole of energy, okay? One mole is 6.023 times 10 to the 23rd power, alright? So, in order to break the hydrogen bonds, we need to add enough heat directly proportional to the number of hydrogen bonds. So let's go back and look at this. In order in, to break the uh, double stranded ligand nucleotide, we need to uh, add enough heat to break 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 hydrogen bonds. Uh, now let's compare that to our DNA and look what we have here. We have 14 hydrogen bonds here. So what's the difference in the amount of energy needed to separate this DNA strand compared to that double stranded liquid nucleotide? Can you do the math? Do you need me to help you calculate this? And everything? I was thinking, well what about if there's other chemicals that are floating around and since there's nothing there to, to differentiate between the bad ones and the good ones, the bad ones are still able to float in and out of that sphere. Right? And if the bad ones are able to float in and out of that sphere, then that would totally undermine the whole point of this, this origin of life theory. Because it wouldn't be able to survive. It wouldn't be viable. It wouldn't be a viable explanation. Because you have all these bad chemicals, right? I'm, I'm, I know I'm being condescending here, but it's pretty obvious. We have all these bad chemicals and we have the good ones. The good ones are the ones we want in the microsphere. And the bad ones we want out of it. But the microsphere doesn't have the proteins necessary to act like little guardians of the sphere. They're not just standing there ready to bounce bad chemicals out. Right? Idiot. You see, it is the phosphate lipid membrane that keeps things out, not the proteins in the membrane. Actually, among the 1,000 different uh, functions of the proteins is actually to let things inside the cell. The membrane keeps stuff out, not guardian proteins, okay? I always thought thar came from resin and hydrocarbon secretion of plants and peat, which is decayed vegetation. That is, thar comes from plants and plants were hardly present before life began. Do you understand why? Regardless, since the experiments produced amino acids, they can clearly coexist with the bad chemicals. Otherwise, the experiments would not produce amino acids, since they would have been destroyed in the process by the bad chemicals. Do you understand why? You are such a moron, NPH85. Give up and die. Go fuck yourself, alright?